church you can call home where we honor God, love families, serve others, and pursue excellence. Bienvenidos a la iglesia de nuevo comienzo. And we welcome all those of you that are joining us by audio or video. Amen. Praise God. Thank you, NBC family, for being here all the time. Always so faithful to be here. Thank you, Father. So praise God. Amen. It's good to be with you. I have a nugget for you. And prepare yourselves to receive this nugget. Amen. This is it. It's a new day. The Bible says, uh, uh, Psalms 118, 24, this is the day the Lord has given us. Rejoice and be glad in it. Amen. Yeah, yeah. And a lot of times we just take it for granted, you know. No, let's not do that. Let me read this to you. It's a new day. Today is a new blessing from God. Mm -hmm. He woke you up. Your eyes open. So guess what? It's time for us to press on with him. Yeah. What is it you have for me, Father? First, seek him first. Bible says, Matthew 6, 33, seek him first. Amen. Praise God. Don't let yesterday's failures and pains ruin the beauty of this new day. Amen. Give thanks and be grateful. Have an attitude of gratitude at all times. Amen. Every day yeah. has its own promises of love, hope, peace, success, joy, and strength. And many other blessings from God. It's a new day. He says, rejoice and be glad in it. Amen. Rejoice and be yeah. glad in it. But you don't understand. You don't know what I'm facing. It doesn't matter. Amen. It doesn't matter. If God is for you, who can be against you? Right. The Bible yeah. says, uh, uh, rejoice. You know, uh, let God arise and let your enemies be scattered. We got to be obedient to what the Word of God says. If we go by what the Word of God says, we, go, we don't go wrong. We win. Amen. Because we're on a winning team. Praise God. Amen. Thank you, Lord. So let's, let's, let's uh, prepare ourselves. I'm not going to bring the message today. We have a special guest today, and we all know him. <laughs> he's a uh, he, he's brother Ryan, and he's one of our best and favorite uh, EMS guys. You know, I thank God for his gift because I couldn't do that. Amen. I couldn't do that. I could. <laughs> I just thank God for what he does. Amen. And the EMS uh, team. Uh, We all are gifted different, and that's one thing that he does, and I appreciate that. And I want to encourage you to do this. Every time you see an ambulance, every time you hear that the siren, pray for them. You know how many times I open up the internet and I see uh, policemen getting shot and killed. They have families, and then he's not coming or she's not coming back home. They were killed. Amen. You see an ambulance, you don't know what kind of condition they're in. Pray for them. Lord bless them. You know, keep them safe. And the person that's in there, give them, um, just touch them, Lord. Heal them, Lord. Amen. For them to have an opportunity to receive you before they're called, they go back home. So don't just take it for granted, you know, and say, well, you know, it's a slavery, you know, so get out of the way. No, pray for them. Whether it's, a, it's a fire, whether, the, whether it's a policeman, whether it's a, an ambulance, pray for them. I have something to do. I can pray for them. I don't know them, but I can pray for them. Just like there's no distance in prayer. You can pray for things happening in Ukraine, all around the world. Amen. Amen. So let's, let's, let's remember that, okay? And don't just put it aside. Well, I can't do nothing about it. It's hopeless. No. Pray for them. Pray more, worry less. Amen. Amen. Matthew 6, 33. Woo, hallelujah. Anyway, uh, I'll time out. Uh, Patricia, mm -hmm. this this uh, camera is uh, out. Okay? It's got a red light. Are we on? Yes. We're on? Okay. Are you sure? Uh, let's see. I see a red light up here. Oh, we're, on. Uh, we're on? We're on? We're live. Okay. Well, praise God. Well, excuse me. <laughs> anyway. Uh, I want to introduce our brother. Come on up, Brian. And uh, he's going to bring a message today. And he always blesses us when he brings a message. So praise God. Thank you, brother. Can I give you your jacket? No, I'm going to give you this mic. Oh, shit. Okay. <laughs> As he's getting ready to grab your Bibles, let's uh, make this declaration together. Amen. Yeah. Praise God. Thank you. Says this, this is my Bible. I am what it says I am. I have what it says I have. I can do what it says I can do. 
Today, I'll be taught the Word of God. I boldly confess my mind is hurt, my spirit is receptive, and I'll never be the same in Jesus' name. You don't have to be the same. You change from day to day. Amen. Yes. And we're growing and going for God on a daily basis. Thank you, brother. God bless you. Amen. And Amen. pray. Amen. Can you hear me okay? Oh. Test, test, test. We can hear you. Just okay. Lie. You are live. <laughs> so, this being October is Pastor's Appreciation Month. It's not on. I'm not on. Turn your mic on. The little backpack is a switch on. Okay. They have a green light there. Okay. 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 Hey, I bumped it, I guess. Is that better? Yes. Okay. So this is Pastor's Appreciation Month. So I got a little thing here I want to read. It says, Dear Pastor, thank you, Pastor, for all you do. For all your work, your kindness and guidance too. You point to Jesus, you walk the walk. We usually listen to you when you talk. <laughs> we think you're special, we think you're great. We will pray for you every day. Well, at least in October. <laughs> no, really, Pastor, we've got your back. And we'll cut you a little slack. We truly think that you're the best. We thank you for all that you invest. Thank you. God bless you, Pastor. Amen. I don't know who wrote this, but I like it. So. <laughs> anyway, so the Lord has been dealing with me about God has no grandchildren. I've mentioned this before. Right? <laughs> and so I was going through and asking my wife, says, how many grandkids do we actually have? Mm. Well, we kind of lost track. Because we think we got like 15, but then we adopted three of them, so I don't know if they're still grandkids or not. I don't know how that works. We got a couple of step grandkids, uh, great grandkids. So, anyway, I hear a lot of people say, if I didn't know grandkids would be so big, I'd have started with them first and skipped the kids. Well, we haven't had quite the same experience as some people, but our grandkids don't always want to do what's right. Oh, no. You know, we all have our burden to bear. We all have lost loved ones. Mm -hmm. Our families aren't perfect. Not. So, my wife and I have really, really been praying for our, for our grandkids and our kids. We have one of our grandchildren that's up in Gainesville, Texas, that's all strung out on drugs and alcohol. He's only 17. You know, and people are seeing it say it looks like death warmed over. Mm -hmm. So, we're trying to get him into a rehab. Me, personally, when I was in that condition, I got thrown in jail. I got to the place where I fell on my knees and said, God, forgive me. Mm -hmm. And he cleaned me up without having to go through rehab. Yes. So I know that other people don't have to go through the same thing that uh, the drug addicts and stuff are going through. You, your grandchildren are going through different things what mine are. But they're all God's children. So if you'll start with, open up your Bibles to John chapter 1, verse 12. Give me a few seconds to get there. John chapter 1, verse 12. But as many as received him, to them gave he power to become the sons and daughters of God, even to them that believe on his name, which were born not of blood, nor of the will of the flesh, nor of the will of man, but of God. Yeah. It was God's will, God's plan for us when he created us to, to worship him, to have fellowship with him. But when sin entered the world, all that fell apart. We lost that one-on-one -on -one relationship with God. That intimate relationship with God. And only through the blood of Jesus can we get that relationship back. God wants us to be children. And we cannot get to heaven on our grandparents' experience, on our parents' experience, on our neighbors' experience, on our pastors' experience, 
You can't get to heaven by shaking the pastor's hands, by giving great big huge <laughs> tithes or love offerings. It doesn't work that way. You cannot buy your way to heaven. Amen. Only by receiving Jesus Christ as your Lord and Savior yes, can you make it to heaven. See, every pastor has a different calling. Now, I don't know if this is the same thing what Brother Jose believes, but I think that his calling, at least in my life, is a ministry of encouragement. He encourages me every time he gets up here. I mean, throughout the week, I hear him say something up here that encourages me when something starts going bad. When things just aren't going right, I hear pastor's words encouraging me. My ministry is more of get your life right, get your sins forgiven, get right with God and go to heaven. It's a ministry of salvation. That's that's what I want people to do. Once they become Christians, then the other things all fit into place. But if we don't accept Jesus Christ as our Savior, all the encouragement, all the good works, all the good deeds, nothing is going to help you get to heaven. Only by accepting Jesus Christ as your Lord and Savior. So I'd like us also to turn to 2 John. Excuse me, 3 John. John chapter 3. I'll get it right. John chapter 3. There's more than one John in here. John chapter 3. Start with the verse, first verse. There was a man of the Pharisees named Nicodemus. He ruled ruler of the Jews. The same came to Jesus by night and said to him, Rabbi, we know that thou art a teacher, come from God. For no man can do these miracles that thou doest, except God be with him. Jesus answered and said unto him, Verily, verily, I say unto thee, Except a man be born again, he cannot see the kingdom of God. Now Nicodemus was thinking in the human terms. Nicodemus said unto him, How can a man be born when he is old? Didn't make any sense to him. Can he enter the second time into his mother's womb and be born? Jesus answered, Verily, verily, I say unto thee, Except a man be born of water and of the Spirit, he cannot enter into the kingdom of God. That which is born of the flesh is flesh, that which is born of the Spirit is spirit. Marvel not that I say unto thee, you must be born again. The wind bloweth where it listeth, and thou hearest the sound thereof, but cannot tell whence it came, and whither it goeth either. If so, everyone that is born of the Spirit. We must be born again. And how do we do that? First, we have to realize that we're sinners. We realize that there's something keeping us from God. There's a sin. There's something that is prohibiting us from truly being a child of God. When I accepted Jesus, I fell on my knees and said, God, if you really truly are who you say you are, then forgive me. Clean me up. Forgive me of all the junk and all the sin I've done and make me whole. I don't want to do these things anymore. And all we have to do is realize that Jesus Christ died on the cross of Calvary for our sins. Yes. Accept that and then speak it. Share it with other people. With our heart, we believe, our mind, with our mouth, we, we proclaim the gospel of Jesus Christ, and others may receive it also. But we cannot get to heaven by what someone else has done, what someone else is doing. We have a, a son that's in prison up in uh, Fort Stockton right now. And we was talking the first Sunday of this month, he goes, my, some of my earliest memories of you is when I'd get up out of bed, and you'd be sitting on the couch or in your easy chair reading the Bible. Well, that didn't stick with him because he had to go make his own mistakes, he said. I, I kept trying to say, learn from my mistakes. Don't do the same things that I did. And he said, well, I've made my own mistakes. I've learned from my own mistakes. Well, he's been in prison or jail most of his life because of his choices that he's made. 
But now he realizes that he needed Jesus. And so our pastor has sent him all kinds of Bible studies and different kinds of things to help him along his walk. He's accepted Jesus Christ as a Savior. And he can't wait to get out and start proclaiming outside. But now he's also ministering inside the jail. Mm -hmm. So, you know, wherever your world is, as Pastor Scott is saying, let your light so shine before men. Don't hide it under a bushel. Let your light shine. Let them know you are a child of God. Not maybe a second or third or fourth generation Christian in your family, but God chose you to be a son or a daughter, a child of His. What's going to matter, not so much what's above the church door you go into, doesn't matter what church you belong to, denomination, political affiliation, none of that stuff matters. You can join every church there is and still split hell wide open yes, if you don't accept Jesus Christ as your Savior. It's that easy. So Ephesians chapter 1, mm -hmm. verse 5. Yeah. Having predestined us unto the adoption of children by Jesus Christ to himself, according to the good pleasure of His will, to the praise and glory of His grace, wherein He hath made us accepted in the Beloved. Yeah. So we had some children who were in CPS care. And my wife didn't want our kids in CPS because she knew that how that system went. I wasn't quite so happy, just, you know, I'm happy the way it is. I don't need any more kids. We had no trouble with our other kids. I don't want any more headaches. And my wife said, no, we're going to get these kids out of CPS. So we had to become foster parents. Then we wound up adopting three of our grandchildren. And we as Christians have been adopted into God's family. The cost of adoption in the United States is between ten and fifteen thousand dollars per child. It's outrageously expensive. But Jesus mm -hmm. paid the price for our adoption. Yes. I want you to think about the price they paid. Yes. I got a little definition here off the internet of what the crucifixion was. Mm. I want you to close your eyes and just kind of visualize what Jesus went through to adopt us. Mm. Crucifixion was a brutal form of torture and execution in the ancient world that involved binding a person to a wooden post or tree using ropes or nails. Before the actual crucifixion, prisoners were tortured by flogging, beating, burning, putting them on the rack, mutilating them, and abuse by the families, the victim's family. In Roman crucifixion, a person's hands and feet were driven through with stakes, called nails, and secured to a wooden cross. This was the execution of the crucifixion that Jesus went through. See, Galatians chapter 3, verse 13 says, Christ has redeemed us from the curse for us. Yes. For it is written, Cursed is everyone who is hanged on a tree. Yeah. Now there was this, this hill mm -hmm. a long time ago. And on that hill... There were three crosses. And Jesus was making his way after he left Pilate. He was beaten. He was scourged. He was spit on. He was beaten. He had the crown of thorns crammed into his head. Not just placed gently. You know, and I've seen pictures of these great big long thorns that were driven into his head. He was bleeding. He was, he was weakened in his human state. 
He was forced to carry that cross up the hill to Golgotha, to Calvary's hill. And along the way, I can imagine people throwing rocks at him and hitting him and spitting on him and calling him all kinds of different things. But they had a man that carried the, they forced him to carry Jesus' cross. He carried, he carried that cross for Jesus. And I'm sure those, the, those trees, those crosses, weren't light. They weren't made out of balsa wood. They were heavy. He carried that cross for Jesus all the way up there. When they laid the cross down, they laid Jesus on the cross on the cross and they took those nails and beat him into his hands and his feet. For us. For our sins. Yeah. Yeah. Yes. Then they picked that cross up and it drops into this hole. You know, and you feel your body being torn apart. At any time, Jesus could have said, no, I'm not doing this anymore. He could have called 10,000 angels and they could have delivered him from that cross, destroyed the earth, and he could have been free from it. But he chose to suffer the cruel death of Calvary for our sins. See, on a hill far away, there stood an old, Old Red Cross. This emblem was an emblem of suffering. The people saw that cross. They knew that someone was was murdered, was crucified on that cross. And once we realize what Jesus went through for us, we can realize how much He truly loved us. He paid for our adoption into the kingdom of God, to the family of God. Now our children who we adopted have the same rights as our biological children have. Amen. We have the same rights as our big brother Jesus. Right. Jesus died to redeem us from our sins. Remember the, you know, some of you younger ones won't, well, some of us older ones, remember the SA screen stamps? You used to keep them, you know, and we go to the redemption center, you know, and we have X amount of stamps, these books, and I want this and this, you know, and we go get a coffee pot, we go get something, you know, we turn these stamps in, and we get these. Jesus redeemed us with his blood. That was the price. That he paid for our salvation. Amen. Now one day, soon and very soon, we're going to hear those words, Well done, thou good and faithful servant. Amen. But if we do not accept Jesus Christ as our Savior, we're going to hear, Depart from me, ye workers of iniquity, I know you not. Amen. Which road are you going to take? The straight and the narrow? which leads to heaven mm -hmm. or the broad path, the wide path, the easy path that leads to death, hell, and destruction. We can't earn our way. We can't buy our way. We can't get there on our, like I said earlier, on our grandparents or our parents' experience. Mm -hmm. The choice each and every one of us ultimately has to make. Amen. If we delay, if we choose not to make that choice now and wait till we get older, I've got a lot of living to do yet. I'm not ready to, to give up all my parties. I'm not ready to give up all my, my gambling, my drinking, my carousing, whatever it is. I'm not ready to give it up. There's going to be a time when it's going to be too late. People are dying just like this throughout the world. Mm -hmm. The Bible says that hell is expanding mm -hmm. to hold all those that 
choose to go that way. But we as, as Americans, we seem to not realize that we've been kind of gospel hardened. We've heard the gospel all our life. And because our parents are Christians, we, we often, often claim ourselves as being Christian. I've mentioned this before. When I was a teenager, we used to go door to door, knocking on people's doors, asking them, are you a Christian? Well, I belong to this church or that church, or I, I believe in this. That's not what I asked you. Are you a born-again, God-fearing believer? Are you, have you had your sins forgiven by the blood of Jesus? And most people couldn't answer that question. So today the question I have for you is, are you a born-again, God-fearing, blood-washed Christian? There's this old song, I'm just going to read the words to you. It's called, The Blood That Stained the Old Red Cross. On the cross of Calvary, our blessed Savior died. Gave his life to save the world from loss. In his pain and agony, for every sin to hide, shed the blood that stained the old rugged cross. Twas his blood, his precious blood that stained the old rugged cross. Twas his love that paid the awful cost. O oh, soul so far astray, Come and plunge today in the blood that stained the old rugged cross. To the cross, the rugged cross, they nailed his precious hands. And in death he fully paid the cost. There is pardon in his love for everyone that stands. For the blood that stained the old rugged cross. For an awful death he died to pardon you and me. All alone in agony he tossed. In a world once lost in sin can now be wholly free by the blood that stained the old rugged cross. See, no one, no one said, Jesus, I'll take your place. Jesus. Have them crucify me. You've done nothing wrong, but I'm a sinner. I deserve to die. I deserve to be crucified. No one did that. Peter denied him three times. Judas, you know, sold him for 30 pieces of silver. Everyone that he had been teaching and ministering with abandoned him. He was all alone. You do not have to be alone. If you're out there and you're struggling and you're, the world is seemingly tearing you down and everything is going against you and nothing is working right, no matter how, how hard you try, no matter how much you try and believe in God, things just seem to be falling apart and you're even blaming God for it. I've had my children say, well, I've prayed and nothing happened, you know, so why even bother? Hmm. There's a point in each of our lives that we must come to realize that we need Jesus now. Yeah. More than ever. More than ever. There's nothing in this world worth holding on to. Okay. Nothing. That old rugged cross is what paid for our adoption into God's kingdom. And our pastors have diligently, week after week, day after day, prayed for us. Not just our pastors, but pastors throughout the earth, around the world, are holding their congregations up before God. Praying for the lost and dying sinners in their congregation or in their communities or in their area of ministry. 
Jesus came and his ministry was one of salvation. He healed sick. He healed the lame. He healed the deaf, the dumb. I always thought the dumb was up here. The dumb was you couldn't speak. You know, I'm, I'm, I'm waiting for the part where I get smart. <laughs> but God so loved us that he gave his only begotten son. Amen. Let's turn to John 3.16. I want us all to read this. John chapter 3, verse 16. He's talking to Nicodemus about being born again. Mm -hmm. let, me give you, let me give you a little bit of a history on something first. EMS, we have that little symbol, the uh, uh, stick, the snake going up it. Yeah. Okay. So, as Moses lifted up the serpent in the wilderness, mm -hmm. even so must the Son of God be lifted up. When they were in the children of Israel in the, in the wilderness, and they were all getting bit by all these, these vipers. You know, Moses was trained. God said, make a brazen serpent and hold it up. And everyone that looks on that will be healed. Well, when Jesus, he was lifted up for all of us to see on the cross. Yes. We look on him. We accept him as Lord and Savior. Our sins are forgiven. We can have our bodies healed. He done and he paid the entire price for everything. Yes. Verse 15 it says, That whosoever believeth in him should not perish, but have eternal life. John 3 16 says, For God so loved the world that he gave his only begotten Son. That whosoever believeth in him should not perish, but have everlasting life. For God sent not his Son into the world to condemn the world. But the world through him might be saved. Amen. There is nothing in this world more important than having your sins forgiven. You might be a multimillionaire, own multiple corporations. You might have the biggest, fanciest mansion. Let me tell you something. One day, I'm going to live in a mansion. <laughs> And I ain't going to pay for it. I don't have to make payments on it. I don't have to pay the electric bill. Right. The sun is going to be the light. Yes. No water bill. <laughs> Rivers of pure water flowing through there. Yeah. Want to buy food. The trees will put out fresh fruit all the time. Can you imagine eating angel food up there? Angel food. Angel food. <laughs> Jesus is the reason yes. that we can have eternal life. Amen. God sent His Son into the world to die on the cross of Calvary. But He didn't stay dead. They took Him off the cross. They buried Him on the third day. Victoriously, the great big huge stone was rolled away and Jesus came out Showing that we, our sins, yes. are dead. Yes. We accept Jesus Christ as our Savior. We're a new creature. We're alive unto Him. We can live victoriously forever and ever in heaven. Amen. Jesus filled that void between heaven and hell when He died on the cross of Calvary. Yes. And each one of us has the opportunity today we may not have an opportunity tomorrow to accept Jesus. But if you have never accepted Jesus Christ as your Savior, now is the accepted time. Right now is the hour of salvation. So let's all to bow our heads, close our eyes, and the Holy Spirit moves up and down the aisles, across the airwaves to wherever the People are listening or watching. Father, right now, in Jesus' name, we lift up the name of Jesus, the name above every name. We ask, Father, that you begin to touch and speak to each and every individual. And Lord, even though we may have accepted you in the past, 
Perhaps our light is getting dim. Perhaps the living of things of this earth creep in and take over. Father, I pray right now that those who have never accepted you as Lord and Savior will call upon you. Say, Father, forgive me of my sins. Cleanse me of all my unrighteousness and make me a new creature. That my name be written down in the Lamb's Book of Life. And for those who have accepted Jesus, but things are, creep, are creeping in, and we may not be as close to God as we were at one time, I pray, Lord God, that you will help them to recommit their life to you, rededicate their life to you, that they will also confess their sins and be washed pure by the blood of Jesus. And Father, right now, we just want to say thank you for your love, for your goodness and your mercy. We thank you, Jesus, for the ultimate sacrifice that you made on the cross of Calvary for our sins. And we ask this in Jesus' precious name. Amen. 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 So at this time, I'm going to turn the service back over to our pastor. I know it was short. I could chase rabbits if I felt like it. I don't think that's what <laughs> God is wanting me to do. I just want you to remember that, Pastor, we love you. Oh, thank you. Love you guys. And there is nothing more important than having a pastor who loves you, prays for you, comes to visit you, whatever the need is, they're there for us. Amen. Thank you, brother. Hallelujah. Praise God. Thank you, Lord. That was good. Thank you. That blessed me. I don't know about you. But uh, if you don't come prepared, one of the things for pre preparation is prepare to receive what God has for you. Amen. Amen. Don't just be putting it off. Well, that wasn't for me. No, all of it is for us. Amen. Yes. For God so loved the world. Yes, the world means everyone. Yes. Amen. And you know what? <laughs> everyone has not accepted Christ. That's right. And uh, I was talking to you earlier. And uh, we have our little worlds we go into. Go into the world. Let your light shine. Amen. That means share Jesus. Be a minister of reconciliation. Bring in the good news Amen. to a lost world. Bring in light to a dead world. Yes. Amen. That's you. Amen. And you can do this because the Bible says you can do all things through Christ who strengthens you. Amen. You just know who's backing you yes. and who's you are. Yes. Just like little David, you know, going against a, 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 a giant. Mm -hmm. When well, we have giants facing us each and every day. But you know what? Greater is he that's in me than he that's in the world. Amen. I receive that, brother. Praise God. And we got to put it to use. And nobody's going to hear the word unless you bring it to them. Yeah, yes. Amen. The gospel is the good news. Yes, it is. Amen. We go into a world a, a world that's nothing but bad news. Mm. Right. But you're the good news going somewhere to happen for somebody. Amen. Going there to bring somebody out of a dead world into a new world. Amen. Amen. Hallelujah. Praise God. Well, we just thank you, Father. Woo. Hallelujah. And if you had never accepted, now's the time. You know, this is the time. Don't pass it up. Tomorrow's not guaranteed. That's it. Amen. Today's the day. All you have to do is, is just say, <laughs> I repent. Father, come into my life. Be my Lord and Savior. I receive you now. And start living for Him. And stop pressing and going for Him. Start learning and getting in the Word. Amen. And learning what the word says. The Bible says yeah. the word is the truth. And when you learn the word, when you learn the truth, it's going to set you free. Amen. And man, I mean, you, when you get more word in you, you get more faith. And you're going to step out in faith and not in fear anymore. Yeah. Amen. Most of us are just sitting in fear and wanting to do nothing. No. When you get the word in you, your faith is going to grow. Your faith is going to move you to step out and do for him. Just like Peter stepping out of the boat. Man, I don't want to step out of the boat. I don't know how to swim. Amen. We got all kinds of excuses. But you know what? You step out in faith. Because greater is he that's in you. Amen. And he's in the world. And I'm going to step out with him. Because I can do all things through him. Amen. Woo! Hallelujah. So receive him now. And start praising. Start going for him. Amen. And get into a Bible-based church. You know where you can just. Grow in the things of God. Get you a Bible if you don't have one. And yeah. start reading it. Amen. So praise God. If there's sickness in your body. The Bible says that. 
by his stripes, by Jesus' stripes, you were healed. Amen. So any malfunctions in the body, we just cancel them. The spirit of infirmity, we command you to go in Jesus' name. Amen. So I just touch myself. He says, lay hands on the sick and it shall be curved. So I'm touching yeah, myself yeah, yeah. and say, by Jesus' stripes, I am healed. Now receive my healing right now. So body, line up with the word of God. Amen. Amen. Hallelujah. I receive my healing. Amen. That's all you got to say. I receive my healing because it's mine. I'm a yeah, child of God. That's a promise. And I'm going to receive it. Amen. So praise God. And you know what? Here's the thing is, words are powerful. So yeah. instead of confessing the wrong thing, confess the right things. Yeah. And you tell your body, say, hey, you know, you're healed. I'm calling you healed because the word of God says you're healed. Yeah. Amen. Yeah. And I'm receiving my healing right now. Yeah. So no more malfunctions in my body. And I'm not going to confess the wrong things. I'm going to confess the right thing. So I'm calling you well. I'm calling you healed. So receive your healing. I receive it in Jesus' name. Amen. Amen. Praise God. Praise Woo. Hallelujah. Thank you. Well, that blessed me, brother. And now it's time to give. So praise God. If you're watching, listening, you'd like to give. Amen. So you can you can do that. Go, go to our website. It's up on the screen there. NBCBigMan.com. Hit that donate button. If you're mailing it, NBC PO Box 252, Marfa, Texas, 79843. And now you can give by cash out to New Beginnings Church of the Big Bang. Hallelujah. God bless you. God loves you. And we love you. Amen. Have a blessed week.